Hello traders, Gary Wagner here. It is 11.46 in Honolulu, 5.46 in New York on Thursday, 14th day of September 2023 and this is the Daily Report for Gold and Silver. After the release of today's producer price index report, gold prices plummeted to the lowest value in approximately three weeks, trading to a low this morning of $1,921.70 before recovering. Currently, we have gold in essence unchanged, trading between down a half a dollar and up a half a dollar. We are looking at a short-term view of gold pricing through the eyes of a daily candlestick chart. We can see that today's low came in lower than any subsequent low in approximately the last three weeks. We really need to go back to August 22nd to find a time when gold traded in this range near current lows. Traders, on today's show, I want to further our discussion on our current Elliott wave count and why I made the assumption that when gold prices traded to a low of approximately 1914 on the 17th of August, I looked at that as a bottom or a conclusion of an A, B, C, correction. And to do that, I really want to compress this chart a little bit more to look at the five count that I had drawn in previous to that, which looks at and defines an impulse stage beginning around November of 2022, when gold prices reached $1,726 and entered their first impulse wave, wave one, which took gold pricing just shy of 1900 a corrective stage in which we saw a retracement down to about 1822 our wave three, which moved gold prices back above $2,000 an ounce, our correction and conclusion of the impulse wave, wave five, that occurred in May of this year. From there, we looked at the correction as a simple A. B, C. And that is why I still believe the likelihood that our corrective period ended back in August. It is being challenged now by the most recent lows and the fact that we saw gold move below the 78% retracement on an intraday basis. However, as long as it maintains the real bodies, in other words, the relationship between the open and closing price, which is what Japanese candlesticks emphasize as having the key and critical importance of a session's trading range, this is still a potential correction of the first leg of the rally that began in August and concluded at this top at the end of of August. What would prove this particular count wrong would be if gold prices moved and closed below the low that came in at approximately $1,914. Until that happens, I am still convinced that there is a high probability that this is an accurate count. That being said, the fact that this first leg of the rally took us to approximately $1,980 in gold means that the concrete proof that this is a correct count will be for, as I said, this corrective phase to end prior to gold trading below 1914 on a sustained closing base and then return to a rally mode, which intrinsically has to end higher than $1,980, meaning that we have a higher high than the previous high and a higher low than the previous low. Considering that the dollar gained well over a half a percent in trading today, look at the size of this large daily candlestick. We can easily extrapolate that gold pricing, although unchanged in reality without dollar strength, would have had a tremendous gain today. There is a 100% correlation between an upside move in the dollar and downside price pressure in gold. Therefore, 
for gold to trade to an unchanged to up slightly status today. There had to be about a half a percent of gains just to compensate for the extreme strength of the dollar today. Gold held up extremely well. In terms of current pricing, I want to focus on the close rather than the high that is roughly one tick above it. And the close, when we look at it horizontally, roughly matches the tops that came in right here in February, as well as here, which occurred back in January of this year. Therefore, we can conclude that if the dollar finds continued strength and moves to higher ground from current closing values of 105.322 in the dollar index, we want to see how it reacts at 105.665, which is the real body of this doji star as the next area for potential resistance. Looking at today's activity in silver, the single candlestick type we are presented with is much more of a hammer than a doji because the real body is bigger than what we saw in gold coming in unchanged. The fact of the matter is that there was a small upper wick, which you typically don't want to see in a pure hammer, but nonetheless, the definition of a hammer is that the lower wick has to be roughly three times the size of the real body, and today's candlestick certainly meets that criteria. Also, when we look at the low, if you recall from yesterday's show, I looked at the potential for silver to continue tracking lower. It did trade to an intraday low of approximately $22.50 with the area of support we were looking at yesterday beginning at around $22.45 to a low of about $22.15. We want to see if silver tests these lows and makes a lower low tomorrow, or if it begins to find support and trade to higher ground. My sense is we will probably see silver trade lower for the remainder of the week, meaning one more day on Friday, and possibly form a base next week. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We will talk to you tomorrow for the next daily update and review. Bye-bye.